Hi, Dan Ha, and you're watching a special anniversary edition of FYI. Throughout this news and information magazine's 30-year tenure and over 1,000 episodes on the Ann Arbor Airwaves, it has had more than a few show openings, which evolved right in front of our eyes just moments ago. Now let's watch the host that created the show we know today since its start in 1992. Hello, I'm Gail Friedman. Welcome to this very special edition of FYI. Last April, FYI took on a whole new format, providing the city of Ann Arbor with its very own news magazine. We started small, producing 15-minute programs. Each program had a couple of news stories and maybe an interview. But in a few short months, we've grown to a 30-minute show with a set format and regular air times. We even have dedicated viewers. Hello and welcome to FYI, Ann Arbor's information and news magazine. I'm Lonnie Garcia. For the next 30 minutes, we'll take a look back at some of the events and happenings that occurred in our community over the past year. So we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Bienvenidos a Para Su Información, la revista de noticias de la ciudad de Ann Arbor. Les habla Grisela Pérez Molina. Homelessness is a problem in virtually every community in this country. Even in affluent places such as Ann Arbor, homelessness is a greater problem probably than you even thought. My guests today are here to talk to us about what it means to be homeless in Ann Arbor and Washtenaw County and exactly what is being done to completely eradicate homelessness in our community. For the first time, customers can drive through a sheltered space and unload their materials, making it even easier to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Steve Sheldon of the city's Solid Waste Department tells us more. Well, we bring the truck out uh, to encourage recycling in Ann Arbor. Uh, Todd has brought out several examples of what we do and do not take. Ann Arbor has located its EOC, or Emergency Operations Center, and 911 Dispatch Center across the hall from each other in the same building. The EOC is the headquarters for all emergency operations in the city, and when not in use, doubles as a classroom. Now it's time to get in the canoe. The best way is to put one foot in the middle and transfer your weight slowly from the dock to the canoe. It's also important to realize that canoes are pretty sturdy. It takes a lot to fall out of the boat. That means that it's okay to lean out and get a good, clean stroke. And once we've finished adding our pistachios, all we have to do now is carefully remove this wax paper and we'll have a beautiful cake on a clean terrain. That's when the spatula comes in handy purging and cleaning their file cabinets of outdated files. The theme of this year's event was, recycling is no longer an alien concept. In addition to marketing what's already here, they're developing plans to build a small theater dedicated to U of M alumnus Arthur Miller. The city and the university benefit from one another in many ways, and for the first time, they're working together. If you're interested in historic Ann Arbor, you may want to visit the Kemp House Museum. Built in 1853, it was the first historic building the city purchased and is a great example of Greek Revival architecture. Carol Wall, the museum's curator, was uh, gracious enough to guide us through a tour today. So let's start with the basics. What is Greek Revival architecture? FYI's Steve McCullough has more. If you visited downtown Ann Arbor recently, you may have noticed the streets and sidewalks are looking a little cleaner. Thanks in part to a new program the city calls Downtown Pride. Approved this summer by the Ann Arbor City Council, the Downtown Pride program was implemented in September. Its main focus is to street sweep and empty public garbage cans along major downtown streets on a daily basis. The residential college is known for its collaborative efforts between faculty and students, and it's that relationship that makes Giovanni the Fearless so unique. Producers say that one of the toughest parts was coming up with ideas for the special effects, and it was students that came up with the idea for a mop for flying spaghetti and an umbrella as a flying bat. The emerald ash borer comes to us from Southeast Asia and is a beetle that infests the inner bark of ash trees. What's particularly concerning is that it affects healthy as well as sick trees, killing them in as little as two years. So they shook things up and redrew school lines. Take a look at how they got there. The success of the system has already been noted nationally, and although the more and more care stands for Michigan operating room, it could bring changes to health care service nationwide. Looking for some place to donate that old couch? Or perhaps you're looking for a replacement door for an older home. Well, there's one place you can go, 
and that's Recycle Ann Arbor's Reuse Center. And behind me here is a class from St. Thomas the Apostle Elementary School. They're fourth graders and I have here Joey. Hi. Tell me one thing that you learned about space today. Well, I learned that there's an, uh, the Challenger blew up. And skyrocketing gas prices are also going to spell relief for drivers. The state's new four cent increase will help to fix some of Ann Arbor's bumpy roads. Okay, come on, so what do you think of the outfit? Uh, it looks bad. It's pretty hot. So it's not making the red carpet this year? No, not at all. You'll notice that Ann Arbor's water tastes better than ever. Actually good. And even makes some new friends, too. Every four years, the world marvels at the Olympics. In February, the Winter Games will be in Salt Lake City. And behind me, an Arborites have joined the celebration by coming out for the Olympic torch run. In the wake of the terrible attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, we'll tell you how our community has responded to these horrific events and what you can do to help those in need. With all we've experienced today, it's easy to see why the University of Michigan Health System Survival Flight Program is considered one of the top in the nation. So the next time we look up and see one of these aircraft, we'll appreciate the value they bring to the community. The flu virus is constantly mutating, and since this nasal vaccine contains live virus, that means it can change too and provide better protection against the flu. It seems like a harmless act, coming to the park to feed the geese. But the Ann Arbor Parks and Recreation Department wants you to know that there are a few dangers involved when doing this. Every day the Ann Arbor Fire Department works hard to keep the public safe and has been doing so for over 100 years. Well, if you've ever wondered what it's like to actually fight a fire, you don't have to anymore because we're about to take you inside. So staff developed a schedule that would absorb the shock of the extra 200 students. They gave them the option to elect no class, seventh hour and over 1,600 took them up on it. After six months of planning and collaboration with Diamond Bullet and U of M, Ann Arbor has relaunched its website. Now you might be wondering why the website worked just fine. Well, it hadn't been changed in five years, and the city wanted to make sure that the image of the website reflected its commitment to technology. Fears that the infamous Y2K bug would strike had a lot of people prepared for the worst. So the problem is really that there's no way to reuse PVC, and because of that, we're hurting the earth. So ultimately, whose responsibility is it? Is it the cities to get rid of PVC, the manufacturers to make decisions in production, or the consumers' purchase power to only buy recyclable plastics? The fire department's hazardous materials response unit is able to respond to any type of chemical spill, providing Ann Arbor residents the highest level of safety and protection from these types of accidents. The city's 20 sirens are tested once a month from March through November, so you should be able to recognize the sound. They are intended to be heard outdoors, however. If inside, you may not have advanced warning. And that translates into your, your regular events as well as part of the summer festival inside the Power Center. What, what are some highlights of what's going on there? Correct. We, we've got a couple of great jazz artists coming back, um, Bramper Marsalis. Um, Bobby McFerrin, and a new jazz artist to the festival, Diana Croft. The Ann Arbor District Library will be hosting a number of events revolving around a new exhibit about America's first president, George Washington. And here to talk more about the exhibit are Tim Grimes and Jane Conway from the library. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Till next time, I'm Gail Friedman. Until next time, I'm Steve McCullough. Until next time, I'm Lonnie Garcia. I personally took over FYI in 2007, becoming the show's longest running host, producing nearly 700 of the show's over 1,000 episodes. Experience my ever-changing style throughout my 15 years at CTN. Hi, I'm Dana Denha and you're watching FYI. The school year is coming to an end and it's time to pack up and prepare to move out. And the city wants to remind you to take advantage of the refuse and recycle programs. If you're looking for some alternative modes of transportation to fight those growing gas prices, you should check out the city's bike paths and start cycling to your next destination. Abracadoodle is a national art education program that offers classes, camps, and parties for kids ages 20 months to 12 years. Community Television Network celebrated its 35th anniversary by holding an open house. Find out more about Skyline High School's modern approach to learning. Visit a2skyline.org. The state will pay the school approximately $9,600 in aid per student. 
Starting on June 30th, residents can no longer dispose of their compost in their normal compost cans. Brachial plexus is a network of nerves that conducts signals to the shoulder, arm, and hand. It's time to do your holiday shopping, but before you run out and buy the latest version of Apple's iPod, consider the long-term effects it can have on your hearing. With the unexpected closing of the Ann Arbor News, the city had to come up with some solutions to keep citizens informed. The rail was originally supposed to run four times daily between the two cities, but lack of funding has proved this task impossible. The city's recycling program is undergoing some big changes with the introduction to single stream recycling. It's an effective way to recycle your yard and kitchen waste and reduce the amount of garbage being put into landfills each year. Or NAP has been setting our natural areas ablaze. Although it's quite a sight to see, what does this fire do for land preservation? An energy challenge, calling for municipal operations in Ann Arbor to use 20% green energy by 2010. Family fun was the message outside of the Justice Center during the Ann Arbor Safety Services Annual Open House. One of our favorite childhood pastimes, Legos has gotten a whole lot more creative in recent years, expanding to fine arts, trains, and pretty much anything your imagination can dream up. Exercise is one of the keys to living healthy, and what better way to promote cancer awareness than a fun run, allowing the disabled community to become athletes in a number of different sports. Recently, this group took a dive to learn how to swim with the fishes. April is National Volunteer Month, and around Ann Arbor, there are plenty of ways to lend a hand. Find out how you can help in this month's City Roundup. 60. For more on continuing your education to work in the medical field, visit hba.org. Housing prices in the county seem to be perpetually on the rise, which makes it difficult for our most vulnerable population to afford a warm place to live. With the Winter Olympics in full swing, let's watch as one local organization helps mold the future of figure skating during an annual Ann Arbor event on ice. Ann Arbor is a destination in the Mitten State. More than a few noteworthy people come to this area to experience a place we call home. And some of these people have now become memorable guests on FYI. It has so many elements to it. It's not just football, not just rolling out a ball, and it's not great football instruction, how to throw the ball, how to catch the ball. These are life-changing types of experiences. In the morning, for the entire morning, it's strictly academic. Reading, writing, math, science. We asked some of the community's top women why they think Ann Arbor took the lead. I think the total community has a healthy respect for uh, the ability of an individual to contribute and that we look at that rather than gender in making our decisions as a voting public. A hundred people anyway that come down on their bikes. And there's quite a few of them that use, uh, we have valet bike parking, if you could, if you, I mean, it's kind of a joke but it's a great place to put your bike and, and to be around other folks. There's clinics about how to fix your bike, all kinds of things like that. You know, everything to do with, with leaving as gentle of a footprint as we can on the environment. We've got city programs, nonprofits, uh, you know, other exciting events. Uh, it's a great time to be out uh, in, in the summer. I'm curious, in Hollywood, what you've seen or experienced or noticed over the years with regard to how Hollywood views interracial relationships? Well, I think probably, uh, uh, at least from what I've observed, uh, there seems to be more interracial situations in movies and television. I think uh, there is an effort, it seems to me, to, to get past that question by um, introducing it more. And uh, I think there's Without any doubt, you're going to see more of that as, as we go along. You know? I mean, it's always been around. It's been around for centuries, I mean, from the very beginning of time. It's so that now people have to address it. But it did make, make all its money and then some back in video sales and rentals. And to this day, it's still one of MGM's highest top 20, I think, grossing films of all time. Um, Which is based, more than you can say for some big blockbusters that don't right. make their money back. Yeah, you and know? If, you, if you just look at the other films that came out in 95, like obviously we're talking about Showgirls now because we're talking about this movie, but it's still one of those films that um, people are intrigued by and people you know, haven't quite figured out yet. And I think that's why, um, why we're still talking about it because we're not done figuring it out. After they reassured me that was during the summer, I was ecstatic, I was like, oh yeah! Because it was so awesome because you never really think that you're going to be one of those kids that get to be on TV. And then once it happens, you're like, 
this can happen pretty much to anybody because like you're just in this whole bubble like oh they're just like really lucky but then like you become one of those people who's like how did this happen the ever popular good eats program on the food network launched this once behind the scenes media maker into the public eye Everybody that works on Good Eats, myself included, came from uh, making television commercials and feature films. Which is why the show looks so, well, unique. The extreme camera angles, fast edits, and creative props have revolutionized the look of cooking shows. If I've got three commercial breaks in a half hour where people are going to go watch the most expensive television there is, which is television commercials, I've got to visually compete with that. You know, in my show, uh, when our Wednesday night slot is up against West Wing, I gotta compete with that. By definition, cooking is the application of heat to food. It's about heat and food, and we've, we've forgotten that. You know, I, I come from a visual, uh, a visual medium, and, and when I started writing the book, I didn't intend to have illustrations, but I would come up on ideas that I found very frustrating to write about, so I just started drawing, um, and, and that's why there are like 120 illustrations in the book. The Detroit Red Wings had the honor of donating $3,500 to the Great Lakes Burn Camp on behalf of the Ann Arbor Fire Department. We have such a big fan base around Michigan and even outside Michigan that it feels great for us to give back. Uh, it feels good to see smiles on everyone's faces, even uh, on days like today. Obviously, we, we remember 9-11, but after that, uh, we gave smiles, a uh, couple autographs, a couple uh, pictures with uh, people around here, and everyone's just happy to have us. And I mean, even us, we're happy to be here. I'm a Ferrari, and I wanted high-octane gas, and I wasn't getting it. I will, now I really work at helping other people and myself get nutritionally dense foods, high in fiber and high in protein uh, that a human body can assimilate. I've gotten sexier. <laughs> it's, it's just a sexy thing. It's a sexy thing not to think about eating something dead. I think clearer. My skin is clearer. I'm the same weight I was in 1989. My libido is as strong as I was in 1989. I just think it, it's all in all the best thing I've done. Definitely, um, the first episode was definitely the worst. I went in there and I was all excited. I saw the judges and they're like, oh, you have to bake now. And I'm like, what, I have to bake now? And then it was just a lot of pressure. But I feel like um, golfing and just working in the restaurant kind of prepared me to work under that pressure on the show. So um, I think that was a big helper when I went actually on the show. But yeah, it was a lot of pressure and it was really nervous. But all, overall, it was a lot of pressure. We asked the Attorney General for her thoughts on Washtenaw County receiving this federal grant. It's an amazing thing that Washtenaw County would get a $10 million grant. I don't know if people realize how huge that is. It's an unprecedented grant, and it's coming here. What a great tribute to Brian Mackey, your prosecutor. What a great tribute to all of those who work in this field, to the courts, to the government, to those who operate the shelters. Seventh grade civics class, certainly no later than that, that a free press, an independent, truly independent, fiercely independent press, is the red beating heart of freedom and democracy. And without it, without it, we can't expect to continue to have freedom and democracy. It was interesting. I mean, uh, everything about it was completely foreign to me, I guess, even with, with my performing. Like, I mean, I don't normally get nervous before shows, and there I did, because you constantly have cameras in your face. And uh, I think the best part about it for me was I was the oldest contestant. And uh, so for me to be surrounded by so much talent, and especially with generations that are younger, I mean, I, I have literally been playing music professionally longer than probably 50% <laughs> of the contestants have been alive. Okay. And so it was really, it was really great. I mean, just yeah. the energy, just yeah. being able to be inspired and see where these people are at, it kind of helped restore my faith that music is uh -huh. going to be okay for years to come, you know. To commemorate such a monumental day in Ann Arbor, some of the most well-known professional skaters kick-flipped the opening with an inaugural ride. I was lucky enough to get Tony Hawk. Tony Magnuson and Ron Allen are from that generation as well. They both showed up. And then my teammate on MovieTickets.com, uh, Alex Argente, one of the younger guns, came out and skated the ball with us and was ripping as well. And people were saying, who's that kid? You know, like, a little ripper. So it's, it's uh, you know, all the generations were represented and all the different styles of skating. They're fantabulous. And professional skateboarder Andy McDonald spent his summers growing up in Ann Arbor, making him even more invested in the local skate scene.
I'm 40 years old, I've been doing it all my life. You'll start to see that from kids because now they have a place to do it. It's a free public skate park. The first time we walked down into the skate park when the concrete was poured, we couldn't believe how awesome it was. I mean, it's you can say I'm speechless. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, we knew what it looked like on paper. We knew what it looked like from the street. But getting down in it and seeing how big it is and how the features are just not like any other skate park, really anywhere. We have skaters coming out here who are just like, this is the best skate park I've ever skated in. Life's short, skate faster. Here it comes right here. The movie's called The Golden Shoes. I'm the guy who gives Kristen the golden shoes. So when they do movie number two, I gotta be in it because they can't call it the silver shoes. So, right? so, so I'm, they gotta come to me to get the shoes. The show could not be done alone. And throughout the past three decades, we've seen many faces become part of FYI's landscape. Check out the reporters that brought their own take to CTN's news magazine program. Often we as fans are quick to criticize an athlete when they make a mistake, forgetting that although talented, they still are very young. Frequently, when an athlete does something worthwhile, it goes unnoticed. Recently, the University of Michigan basketball teams participated in an event to help a worthy cause. A local organization helps people participate in the sports they love with their challenges. Today, they're experiencing the freedom of movement through the sport of scuba diving. Here at the Michigan Theater, the Moscow Ballet is performing its annual Nutcracker Suite with the help of local children from Southeast Michigan. Of all the foods at the Taste of Ann Arbor, the ice cream is definitely the best. Mmm. Are you one of those people who have considered themselves healthy all their lives? Well, the common belief is that men die with prostate cancer, not of it. But if you're a male over the age of 50, this silent killer could be affecting you right now. With rising gas prices and congested traffic, there was extra reason to support this year's Curb Your Car Month in Ann Arbor. The month featured events such as cycle maintenance workshops and cross-town rallies, all aimed at getting residents out of their vehicles and into alternate transport. When you're feeling fatigued, you should try improving your diet, make sure you're getting enough sleep, and reduce your stress level. If you still feel you can't do normal activities, consult a doctor for a proper diagnosis. Story time takes place every week and usually lasts about 30 minutes. Adults are asked to stay with their children during story time and no registration is required. Visit ADL.org or pick up a jump book from your local library for a full list of preschool story times. And as Truman, Jake, and all of the other dogs can attest, this park services dogs great and small. There's an area for canines smaller than 20 pounds in the back. Reporting from the Green Fair in Ann Arbor, I'm Via Sorry Jan reporting for FYI. Since 2005, Ann Arbor has been named one of the most bicycle friendly communities in America. With an offensive line averaging over 260 pounds, Coach DeFilippo plans on opening up the offense, and that won't be hard with stars such as tight end Charlie Carver and running back Marcus Moore. When you think of the Grammys, you probably think of pop music or rock bands, but the Grammy Foundation also awards 40 high schools nationwide for their outstanding musical programs. Does your basement flood during heavy rainfall? you may be eligible for the government's footing drain disconnection program. A footing drain is a pipe that keeps rainwater that seeps through the ground from building up along the basement walls. The new AccuVote equipment is much like the previous voting machines. When a voter finishes marking their ballot, they walk up to the machine and it automatically pulls their ballot from their secrecy sleeve and drops it into this bin for storage. I even joined the fun getting colorful along the way. to buy some really rich and fertile compost for your yard, you can come here to the drop-off centre at Ellsworth or to the compost centre on Platt. But where does all this lovely black gold come from? It's your yard waste. Summer's right around the corner, but instead of staying inside to beat the heat in your air conditioning, get outside, get some fresh air, and stay cool on the river at one of Ann Arbor's canoe liveries. Today, FYI takes me to Skyline High School in Ann Arbor for the Lego Brick Bash. This is going to be a fun, hands-on exhibition for all ages. It doesn't matter if you're 4 or 40. If you're a LEGO builder or fanatic, this is the place for you. So let's get to some building. 
Stay tuned for part two of FYI's 30th anniversary 1000th episode milestone celebration. For more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI. Mm -hmm.